Hello, my name is Eve Doyle. I'm a jewellery designer and goldsmith whose work is currently on exhibition in the Inform exhibition at NMI Collins Barracks. Today I'm going to show you how to make a roller embossed pendant in silver and following on that I'm going to show you how to make your own version in air dry clay using silver paint to give you the illusion of the silver pendant. To start with I'm going to show you how to make the silver roller embossed leaf pendants. So each of these has the leaf pattern embossed on its surface. They're each different shapes and have different styles of bale on the back of them. So in front of you here you'll see my rolling mill. So this is the tool that I'm going to use to roller emboss the metal. So to get a natural texture embossed into the metal surface. To begin with I'm taking my silver sheet, this is one mil thick sterling silver sheet, and I'm going to anneal it. Annealing it is heating it to the point where all the little molecules loosen out a little bit. So as you work metal, it becomes more tense and immovable, and to soften it again, you anneal it. So loosen everything back out, make it soft and pliable. So that's what I'm about to do. So now I'm adjusting the dial on the top, putting in the silver, you can see it there coming through just here. So putting in the silver and the two sheets of paper and only tightening the two rollers together until they touch the metal. And then I'm taking it back out. So now that I've done that, I'm laying my leaf over my silver my two sheets of paper over that as well and my two pieces of foam underneath all of that. So here we go. This takes a lot of force so you really have to work the handle to push through the metal and the impression will come onto your piece of metal. So I've annealed the silver, you can see the lovely pattern on it, and you can see that it's still quite bent out of shape. I have flattened it as much as I can by hand, and now I'm just going to use this mallet to flatten it out the rest of the way. So. So with my flattened sheet, I've marked out three different shapes that I'm going to pierce out for three different styles of pendant. So this one is your natural leaf form. Here you have a crescent moon shape and here you have a triangular shape. So now that I've cut out my three different shapes, it's time to clean them up a little bit. How do these attach to the chain, you ask? Good question. So in this particular instance, I am going to use some tubing in sterling silver these are sterling silver, uh, to make different types of bales. So a bale is simply the name given to the piece that the chain goes through or the wire or the cord for your necklace. So this one I'm going to attach on top. So I'm going to file a little V into this so that it'll solder in nicely. And I'm going to taper the sides so that it mimics the V at the bottom. And these two, I'm going to cut a length of tube 
and solder it to the back, allowing the chain to go through, but you don't actually see any bail on the front. So having soldered the bales onto each of these pieces, I put them into the pin polisher. So it's a machine that uses magnets and steel pins to basically brush up against the surface of the metal and give it a brighter finish. It's not quite a high polish, but it's a pin polish. And you can see on the back there, that's where my bale has been soldered. Little mark at the side. This one has my tube bale mimicking the triangle at the bottom, the top. You can see the lovely leaf texture on that. And then this one also has a little tube at the back as its bale, just here. And you can see again the nice subtle, but very much there leaf pattern on this guy as well. So just to finish these off, I am going to burnish the edges. So burnishing is basically using a polished steel surface and rubbing it on the metal with force like this. you will need some greaseproof paper, air dry clay, a wooden skewer or a toothpick, some water, an empty jar or bottle. This will allow you to roller the piece cleanly and not contaminate anything that you would use with food. Some cord or some embroidery thread, that's for your necklace. A little bit of silver paint. A paintbrush. A scissors. and all importantly, your leaf. To start off, take a chunk of your air dry clay, roll it into a ball, press it down on your greaseproof paper, and now using your jar, roll it out flatter and you can see how thick it is through the glass. So you don't want it too thick because it's going to be something that hangs around your neck. You don't want it to be too heavy. Now that I've rolled it out to that point, I'm going to take my leaf and you can see this is the underside of the leaf. That's the top of it, which is quite smooth, but the underside has all these lovely raised ridges. So that's what we want. So we're going to put that side down. So the leaf is facing up towards us. And then we're going to use our glass again and roll. Now, and you'll see when I peel this away now, you've got a lovely leaf impression left behind. Now that you have that, you have a choice. You can either choose to follow part of the leaf shape 
and cut it out using the skewer. So simply hold it with one hand and using the tip of your skewer or toothpick, just cut the outline of your leaf to create a very organic looking leaf pendant. like so. Because you roll that on grease free paper, it doesn't stick to the bottom, which is great. So peel away your leaf shape. And then just using your finger, pat in the sides to tidy them up a little bit. So the other option that you can choose to do is you can choose to use some little cookie cutters or follow the pattern of a shape that you like. So if you want a circular pendant, you can put a little penny on top and just mark the outline with your skewer. I'll show you that now in a moment. So you can see I can just tidy these up really easily because it's so soft. So, got quite a nice leaf outline going on there. So that's your organic leaf. So the other options I mentioned were to use cookie cutters. So I have a few different shapes here. Obviously you need to wash these really well afterwards if you're gonna use them on actual cookies, but they give quite a nice impression as well. So you can choose a section of texture you like, press it down, and hey presto, you've got a teardrop shaped pendant going on here now with your lovely leaf texture as well. And the same triangular moon shapes. So I'm gonna show you a few I did earlier. So that is the teardrop shape, but I've added a little clay bale. So the bale is just what the wire for your necklace or your thread for your necklace goes through. It's how it hangs. So you've got that fellow there. This one has a little tube at the back where it can go through. And this is one that I've already painted with the silver. You can see the nice leaf pattern on that one too. Again, it has an added bale. And then this is your coin option. So if you want a circular pendant and you don't have a cutter that's circular, you can simply put a coin over it like this. And you want to add this piece as well at the same time. So you cut yourself a little circle at the top like this, but you want to put a hole in the middle. So we'll tidy this all up at the end and then outline your coin to get that nice circular shape. Now, so it looks a little rough at the moment, but if we pop this out, And we can tidy it up again just by tapping in the clay with our fingers very gently all the way around. And we'll come back to that lovely round circle. So that's it. That's the little bale at the top there. And as I said, you want that to be a little bit bigger. So we can just poke our little skewer or toothpick through that make a bigger hole. Taking some of your off cuts, you can now just take a piece off, roll it in your hand until you get a little worm shaped piece. You don't want it to be too thick either. And now I'm going to use my skewer and just cut off a little length of this this, about that, so it's about, about a centimeter and a half. 
and now wrap that around your skewer. You want to add a little bit of your water for this to join the two pieces together, two ends. And just keep pressing that around your skewer until you're happy that you're, you've created a nice little tube piece. Yeah. So once you have that, flip over your leaf shape and just put a bit of texture on the back where you're going to put your little bale and the same on the bale, a little bit of texture on it. Get a bit of water on the tip of your skewer and add it to both pieces. This will help to glue them together. And then pop your bale down. So you want the tube to be going left to right so that your chain can go through there. Or in this case, your cord or your embroidery thread. And you're just going to press it down into the other piece using the tip of your skewer or your toothpick. So in it goes like that. And now you are going to have to leave this aside to dry for a while. So that's one type of bale that you can do. You saw this other one where you actually cut out the piece at the same time. And then this guy, we can add a bale to the top. So we're going to take another piece of this. We're just going to smush it down into a little triangle. And then we're going to put a bit of water on the sides of this. The textured bit. Same on this. And now we're going to add our bale on. So there's a lot of smushing and squeezing in place here for this guy. You can use the tip of your skewer or your toothpick to try and help them to join together. And once you're happy that they're very well joined and smoothed out, you can then poke your hole through, which is where your piece of embroidery thread or your cord is going to go. So do it from both sides and then just smooth, smooth it out with your thumb. So that's those there. So these are the pieces that I'd done earlier and I've left to dry. So with the air dry clay, you do have to leave it to dry at least overnight, I would say about 24 hours, but follow the instructions on the packaging. So I'm just going to show you these three here, three different types of bales. So you've got your tube bale on the back here, your top bale here, and this is a top bale as well, but we've actually cut that out of the same piece of sheet. I would say of the three, this is the easiest to do. So if you're more comfortable with this method, definitely do this method. Now, so taking some silver acrylic paint, I'm going to brush it over all of the leaf texture that I've got here. I'm using silver so that you get an illusion of a silver pendant but you can feel free if you want to have a purple pendant, paint it purple, absolutely. That's completely up to you. So you can see how the silver shimmers and catches the texture of the leaf. So I'd paint those front and sides. As I said before, here's one I did earlier, and that's with the freeform leaf cut out. So this is the one I've just done now, which is still soft. And you can see that's how it comes up in the silver. So you can see a lot more detail catching the light 
with the silver paint. Now for your slip knot for your chain. So we're using embroidery thread or cord here. You want to cut yourself a decent length. You want it to be long enough that it's going to go over your head comfortably and then that you can slip the knots to make it tighter when it's on. So cut yourself a decent length. Thread one end through. You might want to double it over to do this. Or you may even need to use a needle depending on. I'm going to poke it with a skewer here. Until it goes through. You can catch it on the other side if nothing else. Give it a pull. Now, so we're through here. it's on its cord and you can see it's hanging nicely. Now you want to tidy up that end that you just poked through so you can just cut that away. And now to do the slip knots. So you want to cross the two over like this. Okay, so the left hand side is coming over to the right the right hand side is coming over to the left. Then the right hand side piece, you're going around the left hand side one, like that. And then you're coming over the right hand side piece and in under like that. It's called a slip knot. And it just means that the knot slips along that piece. So it allows you to make your necklace bigger and smaller. I'll put up a little visual aid for this because it's a bit tricky to see when it's all black. So again, one side coming over the other, going around and then coming down over the same piece then in under, like that. Okay, so that's your second slip knot. And like I said, what this allows you to do is to make your necklace longer. Let me pull them towards each other like that. Or shorter. When you pull them away from each other. So this means that you can get it over your head and then you can tighten it so that it sits closer up against your neck, much like a normal pendant would. So the knots will practically come down to the pendant like that, but you can see it makes for a smaller necklace and of course you can chop away the extra little scraggly bits of your embroidery thread that are left over so that your necklace looks neater. And this method would be the same for any of the pendants that I've shown you. You feed the embroidery thread through first and then you make yourself your slip knot necklace. Well done on creating your air dry clay pendants. I hope you're really happy with the results. And I just thought as an ending, I'd show you the air dry clay pendant next to the silver version.